Justin Trudeau is going back to Ottawa with a liberal minority. And now the deal making begins. The NDP holds the balance of power and the bloc is ready to flex its muscle. And then, of course, the Conservatives, they picked up some seats tonight, but not enough to win. Especially problematic for them, Ontario. Global News is now projecting a liberal minority government. And uh, Eric was talking about it. They reached the threshold where no one else can beat them, mm -hmm. we believe. Mm -hmm. Mercedes, your take on this. Well, obviously, they would have liked to keep their majority, but this was certainly, I think, what most Liberals thought was going to happen. If you talk to the, the insiders on the campaign, and, and we were traveling with them throughout this campaign, we were on the plane, we were on the bus, and they were consistently saying that they thought they were going to get a Liberal minority. That is what it looks like. And, of course, at this point, when we look at the numbers, uh, the bloc, though, instead of the NDP being right behind them in terms of the third party, pardon me, obviously the Conservatives are in second, but that's not going to prop up a Liberal government anytime soon. So it's, it'll be a very interesting interesting dynamic if we have the bloc remain in third party status depending on what happens when we get out on the west coast uh, and whether or not the NDP comes in now and uh, you could see Justin Trudeau having to give up things like the Trans Mountain Pipeline having to do a lot more on the environment uh, but certainly liberal minority I think was the gut feeling of a lot of people around Ottawa. And I cannot thank you enough so instead I'll simply say this. You did it, my friends. Congratulations. <laughs> to the leaders of the other parties and their families, thank you for being a part of this essential exercise in democracy. You have chosen to serve. Thank you for stepping up in this campaign and in this political life. I must, of course, thank the people from Papineau. But tonight, Conservatives have put Justin Trudeau on notice. And Mr. Trudeau, when your government falls, Conservatives will be ready and we will win. Even though I'm disappointed tonight, I'm incredibly proud of our time and of our conservative movement. Remember, friends, what happened in 2015. It was predicted that uh, Justin Trudeau would govern the country for 10 or 12 years. But tonight, we have put him on notice. His leadership is damaged, and his uh, government will end soon. And when that time comes, the Conservatives will be ready, and we will win. The fact is, Canadians have passed judgment on this Liberal government. Now, not only have they lost over 20 seats, but Mr. Trudeau has also lost votes and lost support in every region of the country. And ladies and gentlemen, we knew this was never going to be easy, but nothing worth achieving ever is. Only once in the history of this country has a first-term majority government been defeated. But we've also made some history of our own tonight. Tonight, we have accomplished what only two parties have ever done before, by holding a first-term majority government to a minority. We have picked up seats and support in almost every region of the country. And at the time I walked onto the stage, we are leading the popular vote, ladies and gentlemen. More Canadians wanted us to win this election than any other party. Stand of reaction to the speech itself. Yeah, odd. Uh, usually they wait until each one's finished. And to see Andrew Scheer barely get to the stage and Justin Trudeau come in, I think that kind of poor protocol, if you ask me. But listen, that was a rousing speech Scheer gave. He ticked all the right boxes. He pointed out that even in the face of, a, of defeated expectations, this party did pretty good by any other stretch of imagination. Most votes ever, uh, higher, number, higher number of votes than the, uh, the Liberals had, gains in most provinces, uh, 
taking out the giant of the Liberal front bench, Ralph Goodale. I mean, you go on and on, and there were an awful lot of things to look optimistic about, Lisa, for a party that a year and a half ago probably thought it was going to face another majority election by the Liberals. So I think he made the right points. The mood of the crowd lifted up with him a bit. It was actually one of his better speeches. I thought he nailed it. What okay, and Jason, I just want to ask yeah. you, um, because one of the points he made was a special mention to Quebec uh, en français. So what, the, what will the reaction be uh, to that? Is it enough or does it change anything? Well, Mr. Scheer won, uh, won 10 seats in Quebec today. You know, we're talking about Mr. Singh. Oh, did he, didn't he have a great campaign? Mr. Scheer won 10 seats in Quebec. Mr. Singh only won 25 seats across the entire country. So Mr. Scheer's got a good basis to work from. Yeah, and the caveat will be that these are unofficial numbers because, believe there it or not, there are actually still votes being counted even at this hour. Uh, a couple things that I'll point out just as we put the graphic up on screen. Uh, one, that the Conservatives did win the popular vote, uh, though they won't form government. So strictly speaking, it is interesting, if not important, that more Canadians did vote Conservative than voted Liberal in this election. The other thing that I'll point out, if you look at the bottom right corner of your screen, turnout is down but not in a dramatic way, right? I mean, considering, you know, when, when Justin Trudeau carried the day in 2015, that was during a year that saw a surge in turnout. But what I would also point out, though, is that the Liberals are actually down in a, in a disproportionately larger way than the drop in turnout itself. So, so, so the basic takeaway there, that, that voters turned out, but in increasing numbers for the Conservatives, for the Bloc, and for the Greens. Okay, that's good. Let's just leave that board up for a minute if we can, because I, I just want to contrast that with what happened in 2015. So as we've talked about before, the, the Conservative Party not great at growing its support. And indeed, in 2015, it was 5,600,000 or there or take. But the Liberal Party, who benefited from big turnout and benefited probably from a, a country that wanted to get rid of a government had been in place for, for 10 years, they had in, in 2015, in terms of popular support, close to 7 million people. So you can see that that drop has, has left them now in a minority position, but also that that's why there's that disparity between them and the Conservatives. OK, we're, we're getting ready to wrap this down going forward. Bob Ray, last thought from you. Well, I thought <clears throat> the speeches kind of summed up the election. Uh, they were all talking over each other. There was, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't de completely deliberate, but... You know, as we saw the triple screen here in this, this studio, it was frankly ridiculous in, in terms of people delivering messages. They were giving the same speeches they gave throughout the campaign. There was no different tempo. <clears throat> there was no self-deprecation. There was no real humor. The country needed somebody to really stand up and talk about yeah. the importance of country in a united country, and nobody did. Uh, and, I, you know, I... Uh, yeah. Justin Trudeau seemed to walk up there not realizing that two-thirds of the country had voted against him and left big holes in the country. I mean, he eventually got around to that one line on Saskatchewan and Alberta. Albert, Andrew Scheer had a similar issue, you know, making a thing out of the uh, popular vote versus yeah. the seats. Yeah. Well, you know, a guy like him should know his history. There's two conservative prime ministers have benefited from that very fact. That's how Joe Clark became prime minister. And he quoted John Diefenbaker. And Diefenbaker in 62 was prime minister in, in spite of the fact he had fewer votes mm -hmm. than uh, Lester Pearson. So, I don't know, there was, there was just, I, I was really disappointed. Mm -hmm. You usually have a speech that soars yeah. on a night like yeah. this. None of those did. No. Although, uh, Vashi, that is sort of the story, as, as, as Bob Ray said, the story of the campaign. Moments of just yeah. sort of not really understanding where we were going and what was happening next. Um, but I, listen, I will, I, will, I will give everyone 24 hours <laughs> to see if they can come up with something more in the next couple of days and, and see if they can lift things. Because, you know, particularly the prime minister, the ball's in his court to do some significant outreach here. And maybe they're all exhausted. I don't know. But. Yeah, it kind of ended the way it started, right? And it looks like throughout the campaign, both of those leaders failed to truly inspire Canadians to come out and vote for them. And we saw evidence of that tonight. I guess the question that stood out to me, and just to pick up on what everyone said, whereas Ian highlighted 
Miss Rates, for example, uh, her class and the humility she showed, we didn't see any of that humility from either Justin Trudeau or Andrew Scheer. Andrew Scheer saying we won the popular vote and Justin Trudeau saying we had a clear mandate. Okay, it's kind of true, but not the point that voters were sending to you tonight. And it would have been nice to hear a recognition of what became so evident throughout this evening from Canadians. And I wonder as well if and when we'll hear that from either of them. Well, I mean, I guess it also depends on things like when do they recall Parliament, when does a throne speech happen, when do they form government, you know, that, that may not happen. They had happen. a shot tonight, though, Yeah, to address it, right? They had the entire country listening, and they chose At not to. At 2 o'clock yeah. in the morning, I'm not sure everybody... Well, well, everybody's still well, up, Bob. I'm, I'm optimistic. Yeah. I'm optimistic. I, I hope that somebody was listening. <laughs> everybody's still